Okay, maybe we can get started now. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, uh, Nikita Kalinin from St. Petersburg State University. And he's going to tell us about shrinking dynamics on tropical, uh, tropical series. Over to you, Nikita. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk here. It's a great pleasure for me. It's the first time I have a talk in that in, in your place. Uh, so sorry that it's uh, uh, just online talk, but I could come there if it's possible, like maybe in the future. So I expect that it's a great place, ICT. So let me go to the talk. Uh, I assume that everybody knows what is a tropical curve, but if not, just interrupt me in, in the in the place when I start to talk about them. Also, please interrupt me at any moment uh, if you wish, uh, just to ask questions because I, I so de depending on questions, I have different uh, plans of, of my talk. Well, let, let me start with motivation. Motivation is not a tropical geometry. It's some simple combinatorial model, which is called sandpile model. Uh, so setup is as follows. Uh, I have G and G is a finite graph. So I have some vertices, some edges, like something like that. Uh, basically any fine graph. Also, I have a special uh, subset of its vertices, DG. Uh, the notation will be clear later, but for now it's just a subset of its vertices. For example, on this picture, it will be this one, for example, so the DG. And the whole graph is G. And this subset is called the set of sinks. Also, the name will be clear later. Uh, also, let, let me add that it's, it's a finite connected graph. Finite connected graph. Connected. Well, then uh, the sand pile, as a sand pile state, it just function phi uh, from the vertices of G to non-negative integers. So you should think about that as a number of grains of sand at each vertex. So for example, here I have like uh, five grains, one grain, two grains, zero grains, seven grains. So just some numbers at, at any vertex. And then the main operation uh, for this sand pile model is as follows. So if uh, a number of grains at a vertex is at least the degree of the vertex, then I'm allowed to perform a top link, top link at V. And also I allow to perform top links only in the internal verses. So only if a V belongs to G minus DG. So I cannot perform top links at sinks. So I can perform top links only at non sync verses. So for example, if my graph is something like that, so here I have a graph. And uh, I have one vertex of valency four, and I have exactly four grains there. So I'm allowed to topple it. And this topping looks as follows. So I just send one grain to each of the neighboring vertices. So I he here I have minus four. So it, it, it uh, becomes zero. And uh, each neighbor gets one additional grain. Two becomes three, one becomes two, zero becomes one and three becomes four. And now you see, so if this vertex is of degree four, as it's here, so also I can perform topping at that vertex. So maybe I have just one vertex like that, it's the initial state, but once I perform a topping, it can provoke more toppings. So it's like an avalanche of sand. Uh, well, so now I write this formula, so if, uh, uh, f of v, phi of v is at least degree of v, then I define a new, to, a new state, which I denote by tv of phi. Uh, it's phi prime, uh, defined as follows. So phi prime of v is phi of v minus degree of v. So my vertex v loses degree of v grains. Then each neighbors, so each, each neighbor of uh, v gets one additional grain, so it's here. Uh, and uh, all the other vertices remain unchanged. So all the other vertices are just the same. 
Okay, so that's a uh, basic step, step of this model. Uh, and then uh, also I recall that we, we cannot perform toplings at DG. So uh, things are basically a special set of verses where I cannot perform toplings. Uh, another point of view is that if some send fall to DG, it just disappears from the system. So instead of things, I could just, for example, uh, draw like half edges. So here it's things. Meaning that if some sand grains go by this edge, they disappear from the system. Well, so here is the model. Uh, and now the first lemma, uh, which is not very difficult. So let's suppose that uh, the set of things is not empty. So, well, not empty. And G is a finite connected graph. And then any relaxation eventually terminates. A relaxation is the process where I perform toplings while it's possible. So I start with some state, I find a vertex with a big number of grains, at least it's its uh, degree valency. Then I perform a topping. Then again, if there is at least one vertex uh, with big number of grains, I perform toppings. Then I claim that if my graph is finite and the set of things is not empty, then this process uh, eventually terminates. Uh, should I explain that or it's clear for the audience? Uh, maybe you could explain a bit. And also, I had a question. What is the word relaxation? Maybe you said it. I, I missed it. A relaxation is uh, performing toplings while it's possible. Ah, okay. I see. So I uh, I look for vertices with big number of grains and perform toplings. And if in my state the number of grains at each vertex less than its degree, then I stop. So it's, uh, it means that relaxation is, uh, terminates. Well, uh, let me explain the proof of this lemma. So first of all, if I have a fine graph, then the total number of cent is finite, right? Because it's sum of finite number of finite numbers. And then also I have at least one thing. And here maybe uh, some graph. Then each time I perform a toppling at a neighbor of a sink, I lose one grain from my system. Because I recall that I cannot perform toppings at sinks. It means that the grains which goes to sinks, they disappear. It means then if I have a finite number of grains in the initial state, then I can perform only finite number of toppings at neighbors of sinks. Because in each such topping, I lose at least one grain from my system. But then it means that I can perform only finite number of toppings and the neighbors of the neighbors, right? Because if I perform top, toppling at V uh, big enough uh, times, then uh, I receive a big amount of sand at the vertex W. And then I can perform one more topping at W. Uh, and, and so on. So basically, I can just uh, give a, uh, some bound for the number of toppings at any vertex, uh, which depends on the distance to the sink. Is it okay now? Yeah, I got it. Uh, I think there's a question for you, just one moment. Mm -hmm. You're assuming that the graph is connected, right? Just to clarify, you need, otherwise this won't yes. quite go through. Right. Yes, 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 sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Then the next natural question is, okay, so we know that any relaxation is uh, will eventually terminate, but maybe we can uh, get different results. So in the next lemma uh, is follow. So uh, let H uh, denote the topping function of phi. The topping function is a function which measures the number of toppings at uh, vertices. So, so I start with a state phi, I perform some relaxation, 
And for each vertex, I count the number of toppings at this vertex. And this is a function h. Function h is a function from my graph to non-negative numbers. And then uh, I say that uh, in this case, phi plus discrete Laplacian of h is at most the degree. So here I mean the following. So for, for each vertex v, not and think, uh, phi of v plus Laplacian of h of v is at most degree of v. And here the discrete Laplacian of function uh, is, uh, well, is the standard definition. Uh, it, it just follows. So uh, at, if I have a function h, that then at vertex v, its Laplacian is follows. I uh, take the sum of values of h over all neighbors of v and subtract the degree of v times h of v. Or it is the same as I take the sum by all neighbors of v, the difference h of w minus h of v. So that's the definition of discrete Laplacian. And I claim that if I know the topping function, uh, then it satisfies this inequality. Let me just stop for a second. Uh, well, I claim that it's more or less obvious. Uh, just wait for 10 seconds, please think about it and uh, then explain. Well, the explanation is, is very simple. So uh, what is a phi of V? Phi of V is the initial number of grains at the given vertex. Then what is this Laplacian? So what is Laplacian of H of V? First of all, the first summon, summon is the sum of H of W over all neighbors of V. And uh, it has a nice interpretation. So each time we perform a toppling at a neighbor of V, it gets one additional grain of sand. So this first summon is just uh, uh, incoming, uh, incoming sand. So that's all sand which come to my vertex V during the, the whole relaxation. And the second summon is just outgoing sand. So each time I perform a toppling at V, I lose degree of vertices from V. So it means that this Laplacian just the total flow, the total flow of sand through V. And finally, this inequality means the following. So if I have a relaxation which terminates, then and at each vertex at the end, I have at most degree of V of sand grains. And that's exactly, I mean, the uh, the fact that uh, relaxation terminates, that there's no more vertices with big amount of sand. So this initial amount of sand, that's the total change of sand at this vertex, and that's the final state, which uh, everywhere is at most degree of V. Is it okay? Or oh, there are some questions? Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, good, thank you. Well, uh, the next uh, is following. So one can prove the following thing. Uh, it's called the least action principle in sand piles. In fact, this function h is a point-wise minimal function on the set of internal vertices such that phi plus dh is at most degree. Uh, uh, one can prove it basically by induction. So we say that, okay, so if we have at least one vertex uh, which is unstable, meaning that it has a big number of grains, then for in any function h like that, it should be at least one in this vertex. And then by induction, you prove that in, uh, uh, well, any, any relaxation is uh, at least this function h. So I will not prove this fact, but uh, well, it can be proven by induction and it uh, shows that function h is defined uniquely. So one can prove directly 
that uh, any two relaxation gives the same result. Or one can prove this least action principle. That the relaxation function is a point-wise minimal function among some class. And then, so the, the corollary of this fact is as follows, that the final state after the relaxation is denoted by phi null, it's just phi plus dh. And this state does not depend on a particular chosen relaxation. Well, because the topping function uh, is uniquely determined by phi. So relaxation can be different. So we can perform toppings at uh, different vertices. But the total top topping function is always the same for any particular choice of relaxation. So the result is also uh, unique. Well, that's uh, so I, I finished my introduction to sand piles, and now I go to the tropical curves, how they appear in sand piles. Well, uh, consider the following graph. I take some uh, omega. So omega is a convex domain. Convex domain in R2, like big, big convex domain. And then I take all the vertices, uh, integral lattice vertices in omega. And then I define the things at the vertices near the boundary of my uh, omega. So vertices. Uh, it, things are such vertices that they have a neighbor outside of my omega. So if a vertex have a neighbor outside of my omega, then I declare it to be a thing. That also explains the notation, right? Because if I have like very big omega, then things are here. They're just near the boundary of omega. That is my graph. And note that the degree of any vertex is four for all vertices. It means that, for example, as a state phi totally equals three is uh, the maximally, the maximal stable state. Stable means that I cannot perform any topping. So if I put three everywhere inside, it is the state is stable. I cannot perform any topping, and it's maximal among all stable states. Uh, stable. Well, and now the theorem. Uh, it's a theorem of me and my co-author, Michael Shkolnikov. Uh, it the formulation is as follows. So let omega be a convex domain in R2, like some convex set. And let me choose some points, P1, Pn in omega. Then I take my graph G, is omega intersected with Hz, or Hz square where h is small. So I take small, small, small grid here. And that then I put everywhere in G three grains. So I put three grains at every, every vertex here. Well, I, I recall that that's the maximum stable state. And then I add one additional grain to each of the points pi. So this point, they do not belong to my uh, lattice. So I, I, I need to choose some, some uh, close point to it and put four grains here. And four, four, four. And then I relax. So I perform a relaxation. So my initial state is three everywhere and four at some special positions. I perform a relaxation, and then one can do it on a computer. The result is as follows. So after the relaxation, in fact, I have again the picture where I have three almost everywhere, and I have not three uh, along a tropical curve. So uh, here's a picture. So for example, here on this picture, 
that was a triangle uh, it's a convex domain and i put, and after the relaxa relaxation i have the following picture and on this picture white means three black means two uh, circles means one and crosses means zero okay uh, so you see uh, here uh, for each uh, direction i have some special pattern for example uh, horizontal edges and vertical edges are composed out of two grains okay diagonal edges they composed out of one grain so just one grains uh, like that and then for more complicated patterns for example here for direction uh, one two i have a pattern composed uh, out of uh, uh, two and zeros so here is uh, the following it's like two two zero two two zero well okay so and uh, formally it looks as follows formally we say that let us denote by let's denote this state uh, by phi n phi h so the state depend on h and then i denote by d of phi h the set where phi h null is not three so the relaxation is not three and then this set converges as h goes to zero to a tropical curve and this tropical curve will be denoted as p of zero uh, explained la la later the convergence is in what sense uh, it's like a in, 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 host of sense. In, in sense so in for each h uh, this set uh, D of phi, phi H is a subset of my omega. Uh, uh, and uh, as H goes to zero, for example, uh, these edges, they also they have the same pattern. They become thinner and thinner. And then it just goes to like to, to a line. So for, for each direction, I have special pattern, but this pattern has uh, finite uh, widths uh, in the sense of, you know, in, in a graph. So when H goes to zero, it also goes to, to zero. So it converts to a line. So it's a Hausdorff convergence. Excuse me, uh, could you repeat uh, how you added edges to these PIs? Uh, they were uh, not in the graph first, right? Yes, my graph, all vertices have uh, the valency four. So my graph is just uh, the grid in my omega. And the points P, I, they were, uh, they may not be in the graph, right? But yes, are... so, uh, yes, you are right. So I have to choose uh, an approximation for each of these points. And so uh, you, you are right. So I add additional grain, not to points P, I, but to a closest point in my graph. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, more questions? There don't seem to be any at the moment. Oh. Okay, well, now I go to, to tropical geometry. So uh, this way I explain you how uh, we we got some special tropical curves. So you see on this picture, this tropical curve in a triangle, it has edges going to the corners. And uh, we will have the same behavior. So for such tropical curves. So if my omega is uh, some, has some polygonal shape, then the tropical curve, it always uh, has edges going to the surfaces. So it's something, something like that. So it can be something complicated inside, but near the boundary, this triple curve 
uh, always goes only to, to the vertices. Uh, and also, if my uh, domain is not a poly polygonal, so for example, it is a disk, then my tropical curve will have infinite number of edges. So now that's why I now give some definitions. So uh, I pass to tropical series. Uh, so it's uh, the difference with polyno tropical polynomials is the same as uh, difference between series and polynomials in analysis. Well, uh, a tropical series f uh, from omega to r is a continuous function, first of all, such that for each point p in the interior of omega, there exists open set containing this point p such that phi such that f restricted to u is a tropical polynomial uh, meaning that f restricted to u is a minimal among such functions ix plus gy plus aij where ij belong to some subset of the two finite subset and all uh, a, I, J are just uh, numbers. So a tropical series is a continuous function, which is locally a tropical polynomial. Uh, so for example, uh, I can draw uh, the corresponding tropical curve. For example, if I just draw such a picture, just a grid in R2, then this is a, a, tropical, uh, a tropical curve. So the, the set of points where my tropical series is not smooth or is not linear is called tropical curve. For example, here is a uh, tropical analytical curve. Because in each, for each point, there is some neighbor where my, uh, my curve is exactly as a, as a tropical curve, as a fine tropical curve. Okay, that's the definition. Why is this analogous to series and say analytic geometry? I, I don't see the analogy because there no, you have a local expression as a series, not as a polynomial. Uh, well, yes, so just a second. Uh, so some remarks. So if omega is a convex set, then each monomial aij plus ix plus gy contributes to f at most once. So one can prove that uh, uh, if omega is a convex set, uh, then for each monomial, you can find, a, a, let's say, a phase on a subset of, of this plane, which is poly polygonal, where this monomial is the minimal one. And this will be just uh, uh, one uh, such uh, uh, set. It is connected. So if omega is not convex, it's not true. So some different monomials with the same uh, ix and plus gy can con contribute to different places. But then uh, one can prove that for convex sets, one can define tropical series in another way. So we define a tropical series for convex sets as follows. So f of xy is the mean infimum of ix plus gy plus aij, where ij from some alpha, but this alpha is not necessarily finite. And also we require that F is not minus infinity on omega. So for convex omega, the equivalent definition, one can prove it, the equivalent definition is follows. A tropical series is a continuous function on omega, uh, which is uh, like uh, finite. So let's say here it's uh, in interior and which is just infimum of uh, a number of tropical monomials, maybe uh, infinite number of monomials. So maybe this answers your question. Yeah, it now does. It looks like, yeah, thank you. So basically it sounds like sum of T A I J uh, X I Y J where I J in Z2. 
discussed, sum by all, all integer points. Uh, well, uh, why do we need such uh, creatures? Exactly as I explained you above. So if my uh, convex domain for sand piles uh, were a polygonal shape, has a uh, polygonal shape, then my tropical curve is indeed a tropical curve. But if my domain omega uh, was a circle, for example, then I have a tropical analytical curve. So here this uh, set converges to tropical analytical curve. So uh, the, the set of points where some tropical series is not linear. And locally, it is a tropical curve, but globally, just an infinite tree. So it is, a, it is like, like that. OK. Uh, I need one more definition. Uh, okay, so let omega again is a convex compact subset of R2. Then an omega tropical series is a continuous function F on omega such that on the boundary it is zero and F is a tropical series. So I add one more condition that on the boundary of my omega this function should be zero. And then, uh, well, example. Uh, consider omega just the usual square. That's square. And then uh, consider the following function. I take the infimum of all functions aij plus ix plus gy by all ij in uh, z2. Uh, which is not zero, so except for one point, such that uh, this function is not negative on the square. So can you tell me the result? So what is the result? Here I draw this square. Well, here it's just a pyramid. So this function, in fact, it is equal to the following function, just minimal of x one minus x y one minus y. This is this function. Uh, because for any other function, if you know that it is bigger or equal than zero, on the whole square, then it is bigger than one of these functions. Uh, so it means that for this square, this thing is the like omega tropical series. Tropical series. You see, it is zero on the boundary, and inside is a tropical polynomial. And so uh, the picture corresponding to it is follows. So just this thing, the corresponding tropical analytical curve. And in fact, one can do the same for any convex domain. So let me uh, add a page here. I think it will be better like that. Well, for example, if you take just a disk and then here again you take the function which is infimum of all i x plus g y minus something like uh, what minus square root of i square plus g square where i think it's a lot like that uh, so what I want to do, I want for, 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 for each direction, I want to take the uh, support function. And this is uh, i x plus g y minus i square plus g square equals zero. And so this function is uh, uh, negative here 
is positive here and it's tangent to the unit circle. Okay, and then I, so for each rational direction, I take such a function. And then I take infimum of all of them, except zero. Because, uh, you know, if, if, if I take this function for, uh, for zero, it's just uh, zero, and the infimum will be zero. And this function looks as follows. So I have my circle. Then I take here the function, uh, let's, what, what is that? It's uh, x minus one, one minus x function y minus one, one minus y, and so on. So uh, the final picture will be as follows. So I have a cone here. So here I have like a pyramid and it goes like that, goes like that, and so on. So the corresponding tropical curve will be like that. So here, uh, the function x minus y, one is dominating. Here it's y minus x. Here is function uh, y minus one is dominating. Here it's one minus y. And here is, uh, uh, well, yeah, it's it, it's a minimum one. Yeah, it, yeah it, it, it's the opposite. It, it, it's like that. Here is square root minus x minus y, and so on. So basically, I draw a binary tree, and I, when I draw this tree in my circle, then in each part I have some dominating linear function, which is the minimal among all of them. So that's an example of a tropical series. Okay. Other questions? Questions? It, uh, not, uh, not at the moment, I think. We can maybe move on and... Uh... Well, okay. And then I come to the final part of my talk. So now I define a dynamic on the set of tropical series and explain some open questions about it. Uh, well, the definition, if I have an omega tropical series uh, and for some point phi, then I define operator, which, which acts as follows. So uh, I take the point wise minimal omega tropical series G, such that it is bigger than F, or at least F, and G is not smooth at P. Uh, basically, uh, what happens, I take uh, this omega tropical series and I change it such that the corresponding curve passes through point P. So, for example, if my curve were something like that, so in the corresponding tropical series is a minimum of something like uh, x, one minus x, y, one minus y, and something like, like uh, one divided by 10. And then my operator uh, asks for the minimal uh, on the tropical series such that it's not smooth at P, such that there's a corresponding curve pass through P. So it produces this picture. And then you see uh, what happens. So this picture is the corner locus of a truncated pyramid. And my point P happens to be inside the phase corresponding to the horizontal part of it. So how I find the point as minimal uh, tropical series, which is not smooth at it. I should just increase one divided by 10. So here it will be something like minimum of x one minus x y minus minus y, let's say like uh, one third. So I, I just uh, lower up 
uh, this uh, uh, hyperplane, which I dissect my pyramid. And in general, it is, it is, it is the same. So in general, if I have a tropical curve and the point P happens to be in some phase of it, then uh, in order uh, to, to, to perform a separator SP, I just shrink this phase uh, until it gets to, to the point P. So that's uh, S for shrinking. And uh, in fact, this SP of F changes only one coefficient of F. So basically I just need to increase the coefficient of this phase. So if here uh, the function f equals like something like aij plus ix plus gy, then when I increase aij, this phase collapses. So I just increase one coefficient until uh, uh, the curve touches the point pi p. That's exactly the, the operation uh, sp. Well, and uh, uh, so here I define what I also explained to you that tropical analytical curve defined by a tropical series is just uh, the set where this tropical series is not linear. And the claim is that this uh, tropical series corresponding to SP of F contains P, but basically I define it in such a way. So you see, I define some operator on tropical series, on, uh, on tropical curves also. When I have a tropical curve, I have a point, I can shrink some phase such that this curve pass through my point P. And then I can ask the following question. So can I leave, lift my uh, operator to be the series? So now I have an operator on tropical curves. Maybe I should have an operator on algebraic curves. Right, because it's it's good when I have a algebraic curve, I have a point, I apply certain operator, and new curve pass through this point. Well, and in fact, it can be done in characteristic two. So, and it looks as follows. So, I hope you know how to tropicalize uh, uh, a pr polynomial over a field of characteristic two. Or any field. So basically, you write user series and then take the valuation on them. And then here the, the formula looks as follows. So let uh, let me have a function f. It can be a polynomial or a series, uh, doesn't matter. And I have a point p. And point p is a point in my uh, in my plane. Then if f of p is zero, then I do nothing. So the shrinking operator uh, leaves f unchanged. And if not, then I define a new function, sp of f, which acts as follows. So at a point z, it equals to f of z plus f of square root of zp divided by f of p. Uh, first of all, it's clear that sp of f applied to p is zero because here we have f of p and here we have also f of p squared divided by f of p so it is zero because the characteristic of my field is, is two but also in fact if f was a polynomial then this thing is also a polynomial again because if you take a polynomial then you uh, substitute the parameter by square root of something, but then you take the square of it, then all square roots disappear because I perform that over characteristic two. So this thing is again a polynomial and f of p is a constant. Uh, so you see, it's very strange operator. <laughs> it uh, acts only over characteristic two and for given a polynomial, it produces another polynomial such that uh, its zero set contains the point P. Well, that's what SP does. And we don't, we don't know how to apply it in uh, like uh, other problems, but that's very curious. So here the answer is yes. Well, and finally, the, the dynamic generated by S of P. So as I 
told you in the beginning of my talk, so uh, this uh, uh, sets of sand piles, they converge to special a tropical curve SP of zero. So here it means the following. So uh, this curve on this picture is the point wise minimal uh, tropical series such that P, in just the set of my points, Q, P1, Pn, are con is contained in its uh, corner locus. So basically the recipe is follows. So uh, I take convex domain, I take any number of points inside, and then I just look for the point with minimal tropical series such that corresponding curve pass through all my points as here on the picture. That's what SP does. Okay, uh, questions? Uh, there is a question, just one moment. Uh, so in the second part, when you dealt with these tropical series, just miss the connection to the sand piles part. Can you just uh, illustrate that a bit more? That'll be great. So, uh, so there were two parts. I mean, this, this is sand pile part on the left hand side, you might think is more the sand piles part. And in the right, you have this tropical analytic curve. And, and, mm -hmm. and so exactly how does your proof go? Maybe that'll help. So your, your proof that uh, this really converges to this tropical analytic curve. That, that system D phi n as uh, D phi h as h tends to zero. Well, I cannot explain it uh, very fast. So it's like three long papers. Uh, well, but uh, first of all, uh, for each direction, we prove the special pattern like here. So we prove that for, for each direction, there is special pattern with some properties. Then uh, we study th this tropical series. So like uh, what happens with, tr with tr tropical functions when I apply the separators SP and so on. And then uh, the most difficult part is that we uh, prove that, uh, okay, we decompose the whole relaxation in some elementary steps. And we prove that when uh, Sand pile picture changes uh, somehow. So, for example, uh, in sand pile dynamics, it can be that this uh, triangle changes to something like that so, uh, when I draw. So, and so, we prove that uh, if you de decompose relaxation in a special way, so this triangle will change exactly as uh, it's, it's prescribed by operators uh, SP, by shrinking operators. So, that's how the proof goes. So, we First of all, we prove some things on the sand pile part, prove some things on the tropical part, then decompose the whole relaxation in elementary steps and prove that both parts, they change accordingly. Uh -huh. uh, but but um, uh, in your construction of these uh, tropical series, uh, so some input goes in, right, to, uh, of the graph. So uh, some input from the graph goes in, right? Where is that? That's something again uh, seem to have missed that uh well the it's a good question so you see first of all i need uh, this set of points p and also i have to know my uh, my domain my domain is uh, omega ah okay so, your graph is the grid right okay 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 right yeah, so right, right 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 uh -huh. the idea i can track, uh, con construct that also, may, maybe what you uh, were asking, so what happens if I change my graph? For example, yeah, instead yeah, yeah, of yeah. the square grid, I choose a triangle grid. But well, uh, we did not prove this, but uh, all the proofs are the same. So whenever you have a grid, whenever you have a graph such that you can rescale it in a proper way, and a linear function is a harmonic function, Okay. Then all, all, all the same goes goes in the same way. So here the okay. the, 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 the crucial parts were, were that the linear functions are harmonic functions, and that's true for all these uh, grid graphs, grid right. triangle, and so on. Okay. And on on, on a large scale, uh, we, we don't see this uh, type of graph. We just need to know that here my function is linear is harmonic, linear, and harmonic. So the topping function on each part of it, uh, linear and harmonic. So in fact, this uh, uh, tropical series are exactly the topping functions on these graphs. 
So for this particular setup, the topping function is piecewise linear. And it just exactly this uh, topical series. Well, now I, I come to the, to the final questions. So, uh, uh, well, let, let me start with, okay. Uh, well, if I have a set of points, uh, my operator SP of F, in fact, equals the following. So I should just perform this shrinking operators for, uh, for each particular point and perform it until it stabilizes. So when omega is a lattice polygon and this set of points are integer points, then this process terminates. So uh, here it's also, it's also a theorem that uh, is, I defined SP of F, but in fact, it can be computed by means of shrinking operators for for points. Then I have a process. I choose points P1, P2, etc. Et uniformly randomly. And I start the following dynamic. I uh, take the zero function, apply SP of F0, then SP2, SP1, uh, then SP3, P2, P1, of F2, and so on. And basically it's as follows. I start with empty curve, I drop one point. I draw a curve which passes with one point. Then I add another point. I change my, my curve that passes through two points. Then I choose another third point, again, randomly. I choose change my curve such that it passes through all three points and so on. And then for each uh, such step, I can measure the area of how this curve changes. So for example, I had a curve something like that on some step and here there are some points P1, P2. Then I add third point here. Uh, and then I choose my curve and it changes some, something like that. And then I measure the area of the part where my curve has changed. And I call it the area of avalanche. And also this corresponds exactly to the some areas of avalanches in St. Pell model. And then, uh, it happens that you can verify it by by computer that we have a power law distribution for these areas. So sand pile model is famous for the following. So when you drop grains randomly and uniformly on on a square and measure the areas of avalanches, that they correspond uh, to power law. So if you draw here the log of size of avalanche. And here I draw the log of frequency. Then the, it will be something like that. So it will be a, a just a line. It's called self-organized criticality. So I don't have time to explain that, but maybe if you Google it, criticality. So sand pile model, in fact, it's a uh, archetypical example of self-organized criticality called SOC. And so here, what I claim just above is that for tropical series, experimentally, we have the same behavior. So also we have power low distribution for the avalanches. If we just do the same as instant piles, but in tropical series. That's the first, it, okay, it's, it's open. So we just have an experimental evidence. So we don't know why it's true. And the second experimental thing is following. So uh, let me do this for many times. So I drop this points P1, Pn, um, many points, and construct these curves, which is a point as minimal curve passing through all these points. And then this curve looks as follows. Uh, so you see, uh, this curve, it almost all, all of its edges have directions vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. So uh, at least in, in the center. Uh, and also that, that's experimental fact. So if I drop these points, you see this uh, big gray disks are exactly the points where I add my, where I, uh, okay, that's points pi. So if I choose randomly points in the square, then I ask for a tropical curve passing through all of them. Then somehow all the directions of edges are horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. 
and not complicated. So near the corners, I have some more complicated behavior, but uh, in the center, I have that. And that can be formulated as follows. So if you write the equation for this curve, it's just the minimal of such a function, then uh, this behavior means following, and it also can be verified by experiment, that the average of coefficients aij plus the average of the coefficient a i plus one j plus one is the average of this coefficient plus this one. So here I average over all different uh, uh, random sets of points. And when you have this equality, it means just uh, you just usual grid. So if you have picture like that, that here a i j plus a i plus one j plus one equals a i j plus one plus a i plus one j. So here it means that uh, if you drop this points randomly, then the picture is somehow just small, small uh, perturbation of the grid. So for example, here you have this one, here you have this one, and, and so on. So when you perturb a grid, uh, for example, when you per perturb such a thing, you can get something uh, like that like that and that's exactly what you see here uh, again that's experimental evidence so in experiments uh, by dropping different points and averaging we can find this equality but again uh, we have no ideas how to prove it it's also again it's open it's experimental uh, well thank you for the for your patience that's the end of the talk I'm really happy to tell all of that to you. Thank you. Let's thank Nikita for a wonderful talk. <laughs> Questions, comments? Yeah. Um, could you relate this to like chip firing? It seems a bit similar. Is there any relation like chip firing on graphs? Because this toppling is a bit similar, no? Uh, is there any sorry, relation? The definition of what? Like uh, chip firing on graphs, like this, uh, uh, the, like there are chips assigned on vertices, well, the, and so the, here you are taking them as weights of some sort, and then like Baker and Noreen came up with this uh, divisor theory, so that's where they developed this chip firing. And that also uh, well, has a tropical connection. So I was thinking if there is any link of any sort. Uh, well, it's a very good question. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Because you see, here we take the limit. So it mm -hmm. was this mm -hmm. usual chip firing problem, but on a like grid. So you had a grid, and here you have uh, like grains and so on. But then yeah. you take to the limit. Mm -hmm. Here you have tropical curves. Yeah. But these tropical curves, they have far less vertices. So here we have like a very big number of vertices. And here mm -hmm. we have like, you know, four vertices. But then here we start to add more points. And here we have a tropical curve with a lot of points. And uh, so it should be some relation, but you see here we have like two limits. <laughs> That's the picture okay. after two limits. Mm. Okay, thank you. So related to his question, um, so uh, what about arbitrary infinite graphs? So for those you probably you, you mentioned earlier that uh, th this sort of problems cannot be formulated. Huh? There, there, there needs to be more structure. Arbitrary well, infinite graphs. We should have some rescaling procedure. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Normally it, it looks it works good for Kelly graphs. Okay, Kelly graphs. Okay, okay, okay. The thing is, a Kelly graph. But if you take a Kelly graph, for example, for hyperbolic groups, then it grows too fast. <laughs> then nothing interesting is going. Okay. So maybe one can say something about Kelly graphs of amenable groups, but well, I, I don't know. So okay, uh, because it's all related to harmonic functions on these graphs. So one has to study harmonic functions on Kelly graphs. <laughs> right. 
um and and this this tropical analytic curve it, it can be lifted right from what you mentioned my my understanding was it it can be lifted to a to an analytic curve whose tropicalization this is well but only in characteristic 2 only in characteristic 2 okay well, it's it's very strange but you, so that's that's, uh, that's that's what we can prove we can prove so we, we cannot prove that it cannot be lifted to other characteristic but so we have only one construction we we, we can lift lift it to characteristic 2 uh, but also it changes the degree of, of, of your curve. So if you had a polynomial and its zero set do not contain a point, we construct another polynomial and its zero set contains this point in a canonical okay. way, but only in characteristic two. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. AV team, can you enable the online participants to unmute themselves? So the uh, online participants, if you have any questions, just unmute yourselves and ask. Or if you prefer, you can type the question and I can read it out. Uh, in the meanwhile, I had a question. Uh, so this uh, minimization procedure reminded me a bit of uh, uh, curve shortening flow on, uh, you know, in which people in differential geometry study, like also for graphs. Uh, is, is there a relation? Like, uh, is there some? Probably too vague the question, but I understand your question. Uh, well, it also reminds me of that, but uh, still no, no, no connection. Uh, well, uh, one can define the following thing one can define the symplectic lens of tropical curve. It's when you take the Euclidean lens of edges, but multiply by the lens of primitive vector in this, dire this direction. Uh -huh. Then this curve is. Uh, the tropical curve with the minimal symplectic lens passing through these points. I see. It's interesting. And and also, uh, what about uh, so? Is dimension two very special here, or do you expect similar behavior, provided you have those properties that you mentioned, like harmonicity of linear functions and so on, in higher dimensions? Well, it's also true in higher dimensions in RN, but the proofs are more technically complicated, but I that's see. the same. The corresponding object would be a tropical curve still, or a tropical analytic curve, or a higher dimensional object? Deal with tropical hypersurfaces. Okay, right, right, yeah. yeah. Of co dimension one. Right, 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 yeah. Other questions? Check the online. Uh, I have one more question, which is uh, so uh, again, it's a bit, it's a bit vague, but it, this reminds me also of like uh, if you have a lattice uh, quantum field theory, like people study th things on the lattice and then they try to understand uh, in the continuum limit, uh, and then usually there's some you know uh, field theory, and in, in, when there is like a critical point, there's some conformal field theory. Uh, is there any connection? Because I know people in statistical physics study these sand pile models. As well, and there's usually some conformal field theory in the background. Is there? Did you? I don't know. Encounter well, any? I'm not, I'm not a specialist in conformal field theory. Yes, uh, what people do in some piles with conformal field theory, they they uh, measure some uh, correlations between yeah. amount of sand at different points. And what happens when, with all of that when you pass to the limit? I don't know. Also, we have here very special states, so it's not just you no know, just random yeah. states, on the, but very special. And also, the result is like for most of points, we know that the number of grains is three. Uh, yeah. So here, it does make sense to measure some correlation. So I, I don't know what happens with yeah. uh, this conformal field theory techniques when you pass to the limit, but, but I don't understand them. So. Okay, uh, any other questions or comments from the online folks as well? Okay. Uh, if there are no other questions, uh, let's thank Nikita again for a great talk. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.